Welcome back to the Fight Pit, ladies and gentlemen. We got a special one for you today. I am Drew. I got Rob. I got Kai Guy. And today we have a very special guest, a certified OG of the fight game, Hall of Fame, cut man, movie star, and 209 legend, Mr. Jacob Stitch Duran. Welcome to the fight pit, sir. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you threw out the 209. You know, that's a good way to get started, right? I, you know, I, I, I wasn't trying to pull on the heartstrings, you know, but that's just something that's always, I, I can't help but always just root for everybody from the 209, you know, uh, you know, as well as I do, it's a rough place to be from. And it's very, very rare that people make it to, uh, you know, through and to the success that you've made it to. So it's a, it's, a, it's a true honor to have you in here, sir. How is everything going so far? How's 2024 treating you? Man, I've been blessed, man. Just, you know, keeps getting better and better and better. And got a lot of things going on in my life right now. And just, you know, just keep growing, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I've been blessed, man. But I'm always that little guy that grew up with the 209. You know, that's why I never forget where I come from. And matter of fact, when Nate Diaz fought Jake Paul, I made sure that I had the 209 on my outfit, right? And because uh, we're both from the 209. So, got to represent, man. My man, my man, always. If there's a... Uh... If there's, you know, I'd say the five most successful people to come out of the 209, I got you at at least three. You know, we got maybe Nate, Nick, Colin Kaepernick, um, you know, but it's it's very rare to uh, to have, you know, people to look up to, people to, to that inspire us coming from a place like that. So you are the absolute man. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to just start it off with uh, a question regarding the uh, the the fight career and the fight experience. Uh, you have been in some of the the corners of some of the biggest fights of all time. You've seen it all. You've done it all. Uh, my first question is, what is the most stressful corner situation that you've ever been in? Is there uh, an instance that that hits you that that threw you a curve where you're like, oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna make it through this one? Yeah, you know, funny you ask that because uh, my coming out party. I moved to Las Vegas 29 years ago. You know, I got out of the military. I was stay. I was I had to go kickboxing in Fairfield. And, uh, but I moved to Vegas to kind of follow my dreams. And my first coming out fight was Raul Marcus uh, was defending his IBF uh, middleweight title against Keith Mullins. And uh, people didn't know who I was, but I had a lot of experience in kickboxing. So, so I moved to Vegas because of cuts. Well, Raul ended up with five cuts here, here, and then here. And uh, I kept him in the game. He ended up defending his world title. And that's when people came up to me and said, wow, where'd you come from? You know, but. Yeah, as I got my hands here like this, I'm thinking, wow, you know what? What a way to get my career started in Las Vegas, right? But uh, I already had that kickboxing experience as a cut man, and so it was second nature, and that was, yeah, it's like 70 stitches he ended up with. Oh, God. <laughs> Threw you right into the fire, huh? Yeah, yeah right off the bat, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's and the, eight. And, the, and the thing about it, nobody knew who I was, right? I had just come into the system uh, for boxing. And uh, here we go. That was for you guys. And uh, so, yeah. So that was uh, my coming out party. That's the, hey, I mean, no better way to get in than, than to, uh, than to just, you know, get thrown to the wolves right away, huh? Yeah, learning yeah. by learning on the, learning on the job, a little bit of on the job training. Um, Rob, I'm going to go to you next. What do you got for Stitch? So let's, you've been around a lot of fighters, but who, who was the most interesting one that you were ever around? And if you have a story or anything to go along with that. Oh man, I got stories with every one of them, bro. You know, you got to pick one. It's kind of like throw a name out and I'll see if I got a story for him. Right. I, uh, but Jason Mahan Miller, I guess, uh, he fought, uh, I think he fought, uh, actually at that time it was, uh, George St. Pierre WEC way back. And, and, uh, he gets all cut up and all that. And I go to clean them up because we want to clean them up before they get to the cameras. Right. And he says, get the fuck out of my face. And boom, I walked away. Right. And uh, so, you know, he was with, uh, I saw him, you know, months later, he said, oh man, I'm just playing around with you. You know, I'm just joking, but I took it as being serious and I just let him be, you know, walked away. Uh, but there's been many, man, you know, Vandalay Silva, when I think when he fought Chuck Liddell, I consider that one of my top three fights, you know, 
uh, Robbie Lawler with Roy McDonald, of course. But uh, about a week before, when Vandalay and Shogun and all the Brazilian fighters were, were doing the pride fights in Japan, they gave me the nickname Santana. My hair was longer and, you know, Carlos Santana thing, right? And uh, so we were friends. So about a week before the fights, I see Vandalay and I tell him, you know, that day when you fight, it's going to be my birthday. So I want to give you some good karma, just mental games, right? Well, I'm working with Chuck Liddell and Leon Tabs is working with Vandalay and it's a brutal fight, man. Chuck gets cut, I clean him up. And then after the fights, I go look at uh, Vandalay and Leon's working on him, keeping eyes on him and he's swollen here and there. And, you know, I say, Vandalay, how you feeling? He goes, oh, I'm okay, Stitch, I'm okay. And right after this magnificent fight, he says, in the ring, Stitch, happy birthday. You know, so <laughs> that's uh, that's a pretty special moment, man. And uh, so, yeah, tons of them, bro. We got to sit down next time I go into the Valley, man. Sit down, have some beers and, and talk wild stories, man, because I got them. Yeah, you bringing up Chuck Liddell, that just pulls at my heartstrings because, like, I just remember very vividly watching, like, my dad and my favorite fighter ever was Chuck Liddell. And just watching that Rashad Evans versus Chuck Liddell fight kind of took the took every bit of heart out of me and it's just so when you meant when when you mentioned it i just got like i guess uh bad flashbacks but um yeah I, I, that's that's crazy so like were you ever intimidated by any of the cuts that some of these guys get because I, you brought up how the guy got like 70 stitches yeah. that in itself has to be intimidating but like it was that the most intimidating one you've ever seen uh well no i've had plenty you know the uh uh forrest griffin when he fought shogun first pride you fighter forest well yeah i love forest too i i work with forest ever ever since he came into the tough shows but forest ended up with a cut right here and and that big vein that we have uh the cut was maybe about this big but it popped that vein and you bleed like a pig i know i've worked on those before i used everything i had threw everything out of my kitchen sink all the medications i had and and uh, kept him in the game and he ended up winning the fight and uh, sent me a real nice gift certificate to a restaurant, you know? And uh, so that was a nice little uh, uh, reward, you know? But yeah, that cut right there, it's, uh, when you get cut, you know, you could maybe try to control it, but you're not gonna stop it. It's just, it's too big, you know, and the, and the blood vessel. And what happens, the medications that we use, the adrenaline chloride 1,000, the one we put on the swab and you put on the cut, it's a vessel constrictor. So I used that and then I plugged it up with Abitine, which is like a, oh, it's like a, my wife described it best. It's like a cotton candy type of texture. And I folded it and I put it in there and I plugged it up and went the distance and he ended up winning the fight, you know? So that was a pretty special moment in my life. I was gonna say, there's there's gotta be a handful of fighters that uh, owe certain victories to you solely. There's, yeah. I can't even imagine. I remember watching that forest fight and I was like, they're gonna stop this. And if you yeah. were not in that corner, they would have stopped it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it, it could probably was like this, probably went somewhere like this. Hey, listen, Forrest, I'm out of Vaseline. Let me just get some five gum and just stick it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny because, you know, that that cut right there, that picture is actually on the first video game that they had or second one. But I was sitting next to Dana's dad and, and Don House and we're looking at the cut and I said, wow, it's not leaving then you know, a minute in, two minutes in, three minutes in, you know, four minutes in. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, you get a little bit of a leak and all that, but for the most part, it was not going to be detrimental to uh, Forrest. So, yeah, that that's freaking awesome. Yeah, that was, in <laughs> it's an art. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's an art. It's like with, with surgery or with just sure. painting your canvas, but you just happen to be, doing that I, I i myself i'm too queasy couldn't do it, it yeah. just the sight of blood i'll probably pass out so yeah. more well, power well, to you let, well, let me add there was one fight jay haran when he fought jonathan goulet same thing he took that knee and the cup was about this big but it popped that vein and both jonathan goulet <laughs> and my man had blood from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet it was so much blood on jay haran that i got nauseated it's the only time i ever got nauseated and I remember the doctor came in, but well, what do you think, Stitch? Can you stop it? And, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And, you know, I plug it up and I cover it and blood just sleeps right through the Vaseline and really mix. So that was a pretty bloody fight. Jay Haran is proud of it because that ring is at Randy Couture's gym up in the wall. You know, so when you go to Randy's gym, you'll see that, uh, that, that bat there. 
Jay Heron, fantastic callback. Uh, it leads me into my next question. So Jay Heron, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, will have a uh, have a role in the upcoming Roadhouse movie. And Stitch, my man, you are no stranger to the to the silver screen yourself these days. Um, I recently, I'm I'm kind of old school. I'm always last to everything. I'm last to to seeing new movies to technology tv shows and stuff i uh went back and i saw the newest creed movie not too long ago and just amazing work from you from everybody all around uh what's what's it been like just you know now that you're you're a part of the yeah. most you know epic boxing movie franchise of all time that's that's solidified there's you know no one can ever take that away from you and you've had you've had starring roles in other ones um what's what what is that like is there is there any anything that stands out to you that is you know unique about working in that or is it kind of just like you know you're just doing your thing and somebody's filming it no of course i'm a 209 kid man and and making it to the big leagues with these guys is, is phenomenal i i always tell people because i did Balboa when rocky fought his last fight right and i tell people you know how many people do you know have done three moves with Rocky? Well, shit, I have. Right. You know, I've done right. three moves with Michael B. Jordan. You know, Woody Harrelson, Antonio Banderas, uh, Ocean's Eleven crew with all these guys, and you know uh, Kevin James, Salma Hyatt. You know these MMA movies, and uh, but it was cool because in the second Creed, every day I'm wrapping Michael's hand, just him and I. So I talk to him and I treat him like he's a fighter. You know, and uh, but in the second. Uh, in the second movie, I'm, I'm telling him how proud I am of him and Ryan Coogler that wrote, directed Creed and Tessa Thompson and Steve Kappel that was the director for Creed too. And he looks at me as I'm looking at you right there doing, he says, Stitch, you know, we went from being actors to writers, producers, and directors. And he says, I'm directing Creed 3 and you're with me as long as you want. I said, my bad, you know, so, but I, you know, I bring a lot of authenticity. I, I bring a lot of credibility. I, I, I told them, him and Ryan Coogler, I said, look, if I see something that's not right, I'm gonna bring it up to your attention because you're representing my sport, you know? And uh, they understood that. And of course they welcomed me with open arms because I, I know the industry and I know what's right and what's wrong. And, you know, simple with like the referee for the second movie when Michael's fighting Drago, the son of Drago. He has black gloves on, the referee has black gloves on and they're all wrinkled. So I stopped and I had him pull them all the way back and I taped them and then I put his sleeve over it and they were skin tight. You know, little things like that that we look at. I got, I gotta say, I gotta say. So I'm retired Marine Corps. So I'm like, there's a couple ones that come up on Netflix. The same thing that drives you crazy drives me crazy when I'm watching a Marine Corps movie, and I'm like, yes. that and your uniform's not right. That's not right. And I'm like, <laughs> yell, my, and then my wife is wondering why I'm yelling at the TV screen when that doesn't affect anything that's going on. <laughs> the movie's already out, can't be changed, but I'm still somehow just going crazy yelling at the TV screen. Yeah, it's great. You're talking about the Marines, and you know I've done a lot of military tours with uh, the guys from MMA Junkie Radio, and uh, you know been everywhere. But I, I sent a bunch of my personal tap out shirts to the Marines in Afghanistan, and uh, but we were at Camp Pendleton uh, for a UFC, and all the Marines are in uniform, right? And all these guys are sitting behind me, and one of the guys says, "Hey, Stitch, can you home or can, can you take a picture with me?" You know, and I said, "Yeah, look, of course." So we all stand up and. We're together and he says, Stitch, can you hold my leg? And I'm thinking, oh shit, you know? I said, but I thought, I said, I got a man up at that point. And these guys are all laughing at me, you know, they're making fun of me. But as we're taking taking this picture, I'm thinking, wow, this guy was in a life and death situation. And here are him and his guys are making a joke out of that, you know? But I guess that's probably the best way to handle uh, that type of stress. So that's uh, <laughs> that's my memory with the Marines, man. You know, gotta love them. I I, I totally understand that comedy is my my trauma response too. I'm 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 definitely the guy that you know the worst of times. I'm I, I got to find a way to make a joke about it and get my mind off it too. And yeah, uh, well, I, that's I, I, during that moment I had a man up big time. You know, I said yeah. I, you know, I can't I can't freak out or anything like that. But I said you know, and they all, they were all making fun of me. You know, so they, <laughs> the joke was on them me. So, that's that's just marines like we yeah. just poke fun at anybody you could be the president we'll, we'll, yeah. you're probably going to get an njp doing it but they'll, they'll get their 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 rise out of it yeah. <laughs> um kyle you got anything brother man i just am 
so thrilled that, that we were able to do this. I'm such a huge fan. I'm, I'm like starstruck right now. You are the standard bearer as far as Cutman. Like, there is no name more synonymous with your job than your name. And I've got to ask, how did you get into it? Like, it's such a specific, you know, it's such a specific career. How did you get into it? Yeah, well, you know, when I uh, I was in the Air Force, uh, sorry, I was a brain, bro. Sorry, Rob. You know, we're the ones that would take Thank you guys for your service. No, of course. That's my brother. But, but I was, I was You're still a brother in arms no matter where I you know, of course. So so I, I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley in a little town called Coronado, as a Fort by Merced. And baseball was my game, you know. And matter of fact, I played Modesto and Patterson and Tracy and all that whole area. So I walked down to Merced College and uh, I didn't have a car. College Merced College was nine miles away from my home, Granada. So I would go to school with friends and then they would leave and I'd stay in our practice and then I'd have to hitchhike home. So I joined the Air Force in 1972 and I always told myself that if I went to the Orient, then I want to study the martial arts. That was during the Bruce Lee era. Well, they sent me to a place called Thailand in 1974 and saw my first Muay Thai fight and literally that whole year I ate, slept and dreamt everything Muay Thai and I got back to the States and uh, I lived in Oakland and uh, got into boxing to improve my hands and then moved to the suburbs in Fairfield and uh, opened up a school of kickboxing, ASK, the American School of Kickboxing. And uh, from there, you know, I was a trainer and promoter and all that. Uh, in fact, we did some shows at the Air Force Base, uh, but I learned to be a cut man and that kind of floated to the top and I put in for a job transfer. I was working for RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company, had a great, great corporate America job. And they gave me uh, a week to move I talked to him into two weeks and I sold my house. I, I set, gave my school to a student, put my family in the U-Haul and drove nine hours here to Las Vegas and uh, followed my dreams. And so that's how I got started today, Kyle. You know, it was, at that time it was open, at that time it was boxing only. And I remember I was in Richmond, California. Uh, Bone Crusher Smith was fighting uh, Marvis Frazier, the son of Joe Frazier. And uh, I had my school kickboxing. I was making the transition into being a cut man. And this guy did a good job on cuts. And keep in mind, at that time, it was boxing only. So I went up to him. I said, hey, man, I'm trying to learn to be a cut man. Can you tell me what you did? He said, fuck you. He goes, I'm taking this to my grave, and you got to learn like me. <laughs> and he walked away, right? That was a mentality of boxing at that time, that it was a secret and all that. And, but it just kind of reinforced that I'm not going to be like that guy. So my legacy is to teach. And you know, I go back, and I've done this interview hundreds of times, and never mentioned his name once. That's not important. Now I go back with, to Oakland, Andre Ward's the undisputed uh, uh, Latin heavyweight champ of the world. And now I'm in movies, my credibility went up. Now this piece of shit wanted to take a picture with me and my son. I mean, him, me and his son. So I did, I put my arms around him. I said, yeah, I got it. I won, you know, yeah, so you uh, my job is to teach. Man, the best it's... revenge is living well. Yeah. Hey, hey yo, oh, motherfucker. God. See, you remember me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Till this day, he don't even know. But one of these days, you know, I might just go back. I said, hey, Sonny, come here, man. I said, I don't know if you remember, but you kind of, I want to thank you for making me what I am now because you were a piece of shit. You know? yeah, I, the haters yeah. will motivate. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going we're gonna to keep it going with Stitch right after a word from our sponsor, Pillow Fight home of the good pillow blissfully soft shockingly supportive worth every penny uh folks you need to invest in your rest just like having a stitch in your corner to help you recover in between rounds you need to get good sleep to recover from your day uh if you have trouble sleeping if you have trouble falling asleep if you have trouble staying asleep there's a lot of different factors that could play into it but one of the the main things that you should look into right off the bat is your sleep setup uh pillow fight has you covered they are obsessed with making a difference every purchase will allow pillow fight to donate pillows where they are needed so uh don't skimp on the details pillowfight.co home of the good pillow thank you very much to pillow fight for sponsoring this episode and now kyle i'm gonna throw it back to you sir uh the uh uh it, it's it's one of those like you said starstruck moments where you're like yeah, man we can't even we can't even um stitch the the main reason that uh i think that you stood out to me is you know being from the 209 uh one of those 
uh, one of those people to look up to that inspires you. Like I said, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of good coming out of the 209 for us yeah. to kind of look look to for uh, inspiration. Um, but uh, if there's if there's one instance or or one thing that uh, kind of inspired you the most as far as the career, what's uh, was there one moment? Was there one you know uh, point in a fight that stands out to you? Was it in acting? Was it in anything at all that you kind of look at and you go, you know what, I was I was maybe thinking about quitting. I was maybe thinking about, you know, doing something else. And this this lets me know that I'm going to I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do this. Yeah, no, there's uh, yeah, there's 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 one point I uh, I went back home to Canada, you know, little town, like 15 other people. And you know how we hang out in the backyard, drink beers and all that stuff. And so I drove from Las Vegas to Canada and I was going to I had a UFC show. In London, uh, in LA, after that, so I'm I'm in the back and I'm drinking, and, and one of my friends, my brother's friend, Polo Perez, he says, "Stitch, you really inspire us." You know, it didn't dawn on me. So as I'm driving five hours to LA, I'm thinking about that comment, and I thought, "Wow, you know, me inspiring them inspires me," you know, because it's always good to get it. Don't mean nothing if you don't give it back, right? And uh, so that's been my whole inspiration, and you know, like the uh, I did the last. Creed three, uh, I went back home to Merced. I bought 50 tickets and I grew up in a migrant camp. So the guys that I grew up with in the migrant camp, them and my family came first and there's like 20 of them. And then the rest guys I went to school with. So we went to go see the Creed three together, you know? And, uh, you know, so yeah, that was very, very inspirational for me to say, you know what, you know, uh, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm affecting a lot of people, especially people in my hometown. And if you, notice on, if you notice on my outfits, on my collar, I have Planada on my collar uh, because as I'm working on you, the cameras come this way. They're always number one position. But it's not for the world to know what Planada is. It's for Planada to know that I'm thinking about it. That's it. Very simple. Facts. Simple. Facts. It's always stood out to me. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, Kyle, what else last you got for Stitch? Last thing out of me, Stitch. Oh, you got good questions, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not they Bro, we've been thinking people. about this for a while. Wonder was asking about Forrest. And I was like, damn, I was mostly going to ask about I just got to say real quick, like, just like how you carry yourself. Like, we've dealt with plenty of athletes. And I, what I've noticed in just the MMA and, and boxing atmosphere, there's just a different level of how yeah. they you guys carry yourself. And I just like, it's something to admire. Like, I've, we've dealt with NBA players and no offense, they really have some sort of like complex <laughs> but it's just like everybody that's trying to go up into this 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 stratosphere mma and and just how you conduct yourself as a professional um take notes because this is really just like incredible just i'm, I'm at awe at some of the how you just the delivery of how you answered the questions and i'm it's not something that it's it's not normal yeah well you know two things i've always stayed away from uh uh rob is assholes and kiss asses you know, I, uh, if you're doing one of them, you're not a leader, you're right? You know, you're a follower and, and I, I don't take kindly to those kind of people, you know, uh, you were definitely always giving right. back, but that's, it, that's the childhood we grew up with because we grew up with nothing, right? We're yeah. all farm workers and everybody helped everybody. And, and my parents were always giving back and that's, that's been our nature. You know, it's, that's the rewarding part. It's not your accomplishments, but that you can bring people on board. And, and and have them join your success and and one of the things i preach in house call because um I, that's just how i am being in in, in the marine corps and started to go keep on going back to that but just how i Please. carry i took the bad leadership in 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 the marine corps and i used that to instill what kind of leader i am in house call sports i have 29 people and kyle and andrew drew will tell you all the time i will literally call them and i have 20 20 other people i have to make sure i like they're good it's one thing putting out content it's another thing to make sure your people are good and yeah. like the words that you say just mean a lot to me because I took all the bad stuff and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to have an ego because there's a difference. There's a boss and then there's a leader. Someone can be a boss doesn't mean they're a good leader. Right. No, you know, when my brother and I were talking about it <coughs> last night and uh, you guys, <coughs> excuse me, you might be too young, but Randall Cunningham was a quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles based out of Las Vegas. Well, years ago, I still lived in Fairfield. We did a kickboxing show here in Las Vegas. 
and me and my three brothers, you know, we went to an after fight party uh, there and we're talking to Randall Cunner and at that time he was a star. You know, we're talking to him and we're nobody. I was still Jacob. I didn't even have a name stitch at that time. And we're talking to Randall Cunningham and this guy comes up and says, hey, Randall, come on, man. Let me, I want to introduce you to this guy. He says, hold on. He goes, let me finish talking to these guys. Man, I never felt so important in my life, man. And he's a pastor here in Las Vegas and I haven't run into him. But when I do, I'm going to let him know that, you know what, you just, what you did there just reinforced that this is the way you want to treat people. You know, and uh, I've always been like that. And my brother said yesterday, you know, and he lives in Phoenix, we're on the phone. He goes, uh, ever since I've known Jacob, he tells his friends he's never turned anybody down. And, uh, you know, we're people, people, you know. So that's what I say. Assholes and kiss houses just don't fit in my, in my, in my clubhouse here. In the house call, as they call it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and these guys know I'm I, whatever that comes out of my mouth, like I mean it. And it, I just, I love Appreciate it. I really, really love your answers, and it's just it's it's not normal. It's it's rare, and it's just how you should conduct conduct yourself. I'm sorry, Kyle, for cutting you off. I literally <laughs> it, oh, Kyle, it would have festered inside of me. I'm like, listen, this is something I'll that just I make it all the bells and whistles love, keep running on this good, end. I love good leadership. I love humble people, and it's just it's terrible that it's just not common in this day and age. Yeah. Uh, and, and you. you Speaking about all of the, the these examples of paying it forward, just brings to mind how much of a champion of the sport you are. And I think of your critiques of the Reebok deal, which was a, sh a shit deal then. It was, uh, we could go into all about that, but the big talk uh, right now is about fighter pay. You know, there's a lot of money in boxing, obviously not seeing as much of that growth in MMA. You know, when do you think that will start to happen? Because MMA is here, like people know it and it's a big business. When does that start getting passed along to the fighters? You know, uh, it's a good question. And uh, let me start off this way. When uh, when Dana brought, I knew Dana before the UFC. I knew we were in the gyms. He said he was a boxing coach, shit. He was doing pads for housewives and for the executives, though he was making more money than us, right? So Lorenzo and Frank Fortita that bought the UFC were friends with Dana. They brought him in as the president. But Dana brought me in which I got to give them credit for that because when they bought the company, MMA guys didn't know how to wrap hands or didn't know how to work cuts. So Dana was smart enough to have Leon Tabs and myself as cut men on each side. And uh, once they found out I could start wrapping hands, I was doing seven, eight fighters a night. They brought in Don House and then Rudy Hernandez. Now they use five cut men. Uh, but yeah, in, in that aspect, we were all working with sponsors and I was making well, you know, watches and because my hands were always on TV and sponsored. We were, fighters were making 50, 100,000 a fight. And, you know, they took everything away without any explanation. And uh, everybody's effing Dana, effing UFC, effing Reebok. And, you know, they're hating the whole program because they're just, they're screwing fighters, right? But they went into the corporate structure. That I understand because I worked at RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company. So I understood the corporate structure. But there should have been some kind of concession for the people. Well, they called us the cut men and uh, they brought us all in and they said, same thing with you. You can't wear any sponsors. So I tried to negotiate for everybody. And uh, cause when I would get sponsors, I would look, close my deal and then I'd get one for Kyle and I'd get one for Rob and Drew. And you know, you wouldn't get what I would get, but you get three or four sponsors and Leon Taz bought himself a Cadillac. So it was okay. So anyway, so John Nash from Bloody Elbow called me out of the blue. I never met him to this day. I haven't met him. And he asked if I'd be interested in doing an interview of how the Reebok deal affected the cut men. Well, being that I grew up as a farm worker and my parents fought for the rights for the farm workers with Cesar Chavez and all that. The, and then I work corporate America. The interview I did was very politically correct, but it went viral all over the world. And right here, what we're talking right now, I get the, I get a friend of mine because we we're all friends at that time. And the only thing he said, and his voice is kind of cracking. I know he felt bad. He says, because of the interview you did about Reebok, the UFC is not going to use you no more. You know, right here where I'm talking to you guys. So I said, all right. Well, I said, Mark, do me a favor. Is you tell Dana that he ain't got no balls that he should have called me since he's the one that brought me in. Right. And uh, that never happened. So a couple weeks later, they have their first big show on, on Fox Network. Big, big show, and that's they're asking Dana at that point, what about Stitch Durant? Stitch ever coming back? It was that big. Nah, Stitch will never be back, and if so and so, he should have called me, and this and that. And then he blows it at the end, and fans are still making memes. 
he goes, Stitch and I were never friends. Oh. And that kind of <laughs> you know, we were so never friends. Me, it made me the hero of the, made me the face of the rebellion. And, you know, guys like Wesley Snipes comes and shakes my hand and they usually did you wrong. You know, Goldberg, Bill Goldberg, wrestler. Hey, man, fuck Daniel, man. I got a lot of respect for you, you know. And, uh, but the best confidence I got was not too long ago was uh, one of the top Brazilian coaches that trained Anderson Silva and all these guys. I hadn't seen him in eight years. And he comes up to me and he says, speech. He goes, we, the coaches, the fighters, we thank you for speaking up because we couldn't. Bro, that said it all right then. I, I, I'm happy, you know. So, and people still stop me all over the world. It's been going on, going on nine years. And people still stop me. So, yeah, you know, fight for the rights, man, especially when they're right. Absolutely, man. And like you said, the fighters, the coaches, they couldn't say what you said. And no, you, you, took no. That, you took that stand. Yeah. So, but let me add to that now. Uh, about 23 years ago, and when we're done, when you guys send me your email, I'll send you up. I, I did a, me and this young kid, about you guys' age, John Barnett just graduated from the American Film Institute. We, he had read where I wanted to do videos. And the videos I wanted to do were wrapping hands, working cuts, educational, right? And, uh, but we ended up getting so many interviews of so many people that we made a documentary called Boxer's Nightmare. And it deals with all the shit that fighters go through, right? And we never did nothing with it because we were nobody, right? But we put it together. And with John, he OD'd about eight months ago. He moved to Denver and he was on meth and, you know how that is, right? It's, it's horrible. And Sorry so I a tribute that, to him. I watched this film and I realized that everybody that I have in this film, half are dead, but they were all Hall of Famers. I got Mike Tyson a week before he got his tattoo, Emmanuel Stewart. I mean, I just so many legendary people that I looked at it and I'm thinking, wow, you know, what's a shame is 23 years later, now everything that was happening in boxing is now happening in MMA. Dementia pugilistica, the contracts, the you know the dehydration problem, everything that we talked about then, we had an answer for. It. So I'll let you guys know, and maybe you know I'll send you guys a video. You guys look at it, and then maybe we could have another discussion on it. But uh, yeah, so that's I want to update it and get some new get MMA guys involved and uh, and get it updates, and then call it instead of Boxer's Nightmare, call it Boxer's Nightmare 23 years later. Nothing's changed. Love, so it's it. a shame. Love it. It's a shame. So I'll send it to you guys. One of you guys send me your email and, and then you can distribute it. But it's, it's like an hour. Got it. And we did it pretty much on a zero budget. Not a small budget, you know, but not a big because I knew nothing about film. John had just graduated, <laughs> you know, but the the content that we have is priceless. Priceless, priceless. And we have a solution for everything with, with management, with with pension plans, with insurance. There were simple solutions that nobody's implemented. So you guys is have it, to get it out there. Is it on YouTube or something? No, or no, no, no. Know? This is in my own pocket right now, bro. <laughs> you know? that, no, that no, I not, cannot wait no. to see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we're not going to share it because ob for obvious reasons, I don't like, I want, if you need to get that out there, you can do that. But I would love that. No, no, we're going to, we're, we're going to get it out there because they're, uh, yeah, I, you guys, you, you look at it, we'll talk about it. We'll schedule another, okay. Piece, Sounds uh, good. these chats and, and you guys will bring up these issues and they'll, they'll educate you also. And I, I, you know, so yeah, so don't share it, but we're, when, when it comes out, uh, yeah, we're gonna, it's gonna be a major impact. But you know, and they're also filming a documentary in my life. So uh, I'm, I'm meeting with uh, Elizabeth Raposo, that's one of the executive producers for the Creed movies, right? And <clears throat> about my documentary. Uh, from the fields to the garden based on the book that I grew up for and that I wrote. The fields being the San Joaquin Valley and the garden is my goal to reach in Madison Square Garden. Shit, I was there last week. <laughs> Been there many, many times, right? So so it's it the, the name of the documentary is the same as the as the uh the uh, the footage that or the book that I wrote. So that's coming out. I'll send you guys a trailer also. You got it like a three minute sizzle and you'll see Michael B. Jordan in there. He'll He'll make you laugh in, in one of the points. Dude, getting the exclusive. Please, you send us anything at all. Anything that we can do to help out. Yeah, oh, hey, I'll tell you, it'll blow your mind, man. On, um, I mean, Mike Tyson. I asked Mike Tyson very soon, before he got his tattoo. You know, so Mike was great. <laughs> he can, he's quoting Nietzsche. Yeah, I mean, who quotes Nietzsche, right? Well, Mike did, right? But I asked him, I said, every fighter has that one little thing 
that nobody has. What's that one little thing? He says, well, so you got to get your body in 100% physical condition because your body tells your brain what to do. Very, very physical. But then what I like, he says, take the pain. You have to take the pain. And as I left, I thought he's right because you take a pain in training, you take a pain in your fights, you take a pain with your family, you take a pain financially, and you take a pain with long-term injuries. You know, so that was such a, such important uh, uh, quote that he gave me. Such an important quote. But yeah, I'll send you guys that. Sit back, take a, take a look at it. It's incredible how, like, when you go look at the earlier years of Mike Tyson and you just look at how his mind works now, yeah. and it's just, it can sh it shows you how much the world can humble you. And I'm not saying he was never a humble person, but there's a difference. Like, he, yeah. he looked at himself as a warrior. He's, like, quoting... I think he was quoting Roman Empire and stuff like how you have to go about in your conducting yourself when you're. I love, love, love Mike Tyson. That might be a goal one day to be able to get that guy yeah. in, in an interview. But like, it's it's just incredible, like how much time can change things. But um, what advice would you give to aspiring like cut people or trying people that are trying to get into your expertise or your level of what you do? I, I get that question asked all the time, Rob. And here's what I tell them. I said, look, man, you got to spend hours and days and weeks and months and years in the gym. You know, you just can't walk in. I have doctors, paramedics, nurses, EMTs, you know, uh, medics, all these guys want to walk into it. But you have to understand the psychological aspect as well as the physical aspect, right? And, and uh, one of my specialties is psychology. You know, so you just can't, I can show you how to wrap hands. I can show you how to work cuts, but unless you're in the trenches, unless you really know what's going on with these guys, uh, it, it, it doesn't make your job complete. So it takes years, take years. And the thing about it is for many, many, many years, uh, there was no money. And if you do it for the money, you do it for the wrong reasons. You know, uh, they're just, you know, you gotta have a love and passion for it. Luckily, I've been blessed to, to have been able to do this on a full-time basis, you know, but not everybody does that. And I can hundred, I can hundred percent relate to that. That like you, for you to do certain fields, like some people can judge it from the outside, but just being in there in that moment, yeah. it, it's not the same. It's battle no. ready, being no. able to because <laughs> some all of a sudden you're just stitching some guy up, and it just you get blood in the eye, your eye, and now you got to. I can only imagine just some of the stuff you went through, and you're just a trooper. That's yeah. just, it's freaking incredible. Um, but um, Kyle, Drew, you guys have any more questions? I'm all, I, I am all good, Drew. You want to close this out, brother? Well, no, before you close it out, let me let me show you. I'm looking for Vladimir Klitschko and talking about the psychological aspect of the game. Oh, yeah. um, you know, keep in mind they're fighting Russia right now and all that. But I started when I did Ocean's Eleven. I uh, I was Vladimir's cut man in the movie, and he wanted me after that. So I was with him for eight years, and uh, when he fought his last fight with Anthony Joshua. I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, look, man, don't worry about nothing tomorrow. This is at the way I'm going to take care of you like you're my son. And I leave because I know the guys can't sleep the night before, right? I'm putting the final Vaseline on him right before Michael Buffer does the announcement. There's 90,000 crazy Brits at Wembley Stadium, millions of people around the world, and we're about this far apart. And he says, you could call me son. And man, that gave me chills right off the bat. And, you know, I knew I had gotten into his mind. Right, and one of the best fights he ever had. And I saw him, the last time I saw him was like three months ago in Germany, three months after the fight. And I, the other, very simply, I said, Vladimir, that one moment, why? He said, Stitch, there's very few people I trust in my life. You are one of them. So, you know, that's the aspect. So, in, and also in the Creed movie, Michael B. Jordan asked me who should give away the WBC belt, that was the championship belt. And I explained to him that you know, it was created by Jose Suleiman from Mexico City and his son Mauricio now handles it and, and so and so and they did. So I saw Mauricio in Dallas when uh, Earl Spence Farugas and I told him that and he said, well, look, let's take a picture. Let's send it to the Klitschko's because they're both WBC champions. Vladimir sent me this this message and I'm going to let you guys listen to it, man. It uh, kind of explains everything that uh, that my life is, is centered around. Specialist Stitch, with whom I spent so much time talking and 
he actually saved my career on a lot of different stages. Uh, if Stitch wouldn't be in my corner, I would not make the record of 12 years being a champion. So um, that's, that's so great to see you both as Stitch is the man. Crazy, huh? Wow. You know, that is fantastic. Wow. Yeah, that those, is, those, those wow. are the moments. You know, Tyson Fury, when I worked with him, I told him I was going to keep eyes on him because he had just had that big cut before I worked with him. So I said, I'm going to do a lot of preventive maintenance and I'll keep eyes on you as, you know, so you don't inflame. And so he wins the fight and he's ready to jump in the shower and I'm saying goodbye. And he gives me a kiss and says he loves me. And very simply, he says, thanks for keeping eyes on me. Think of things like that. You know, and, and, and Rob, you understand, you know, as a Marine, those little things make a big difference when you're dealing with life and death, you know. And uh, so, yeah, those are the, the, the fun moments in my life, man. And uh, before you guys go, let me give you one more ideal thing that's happening to me in my life. Um, April the 12th uh, at Planet 13, which is the biggest dispensary in the world uh, here in Las Vegas, we're going to be coming out with Thai Stitch Premium. And uh, the company that makes them for Snoop Dogg and Alton John, they contacted me and, and uh, I said, yeah, I said, look, the best weed I ever smoked was the year I was stationed in Thailand. It's Thai stick, right? If you could create something that tastes, that, that's as good as that level, I will call it Thai stitch. Well, bro, look at this. I'm gonna show you guys this here. Oh, let me see here. Uh, that's gonna be the new label. That's uh, yeah. a day a, a day after my birthday. I guess I have to go get a freaking uh, present for myself. <laughs> yeah, well, happy Let's birthday! So we're, starting off, we're starting off in Nevada, and uh, uh, and then uh, we're gonna go into California, of course. And now they want to do New Jersey yeah, and so and so. But but here's the kicker: is is uh, we're doing it April the 12th. Happy birthday on the 11th, by the way, Rob. We're doing it. Uh, April the 12th at Planet 13. Planet 13 is the biggest dispensary in the world. It's like a mall in there. But we're doing it after the UFC has their weigh-ins at the Sphere. So we're going to walk in there. We're going to bring these, say hi to all my friends and family and invite them to, to, the, uh, to the launch of Stitch Premium. Crazy, huh? That is Bro, awesome. oh, that's, hey, Watch you know... One. You know I'm gonna be trying to make. I live in I live in Nevada right now, yeah. and there. I mean, my page isn't called High Fight IQ for nothing. So you know yeah. I'll be you know I'll yeah. be one of the first ones to try it. Beautiful yeah. stuff, man. That is. I'm so much looking forward to that. I'm so happy that you know things have been going so well for you in that regard. Um, you are you are legitimately you know one of the pioneers of the game and it's just truly an honor to have you thank you so much uh you know for for giving our you know we're not big we're we're you know like you said before you can't you can't be doing anything that, that like that for money it's all about passion you got to yeah. do it because that's what you want to do that's what we're doing you know i never competed in uh you know pro <laughs> martial arts or anything i did compete i've been a part of the game uh, involved in the community for you know since I was four years old uh, and it's it's just it's truly an honor to get to sit down with the greats like this and that's I promise that's the last ass kissing that I'm gonna do I just had to get all that out of the way <laughs> where, where um, do you live at, Drew? Where's I'm in Reno right now yeah well that's that's where the plants at so yep. uh, yeah that's oh that's, yeah that's where they're growing uh, you're getting the rag bro yeah, that's where they're growing it right there, and you know. Start clocking in. Start clocking in, Drew. Putting the work. Yes, for sir. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. I already, I, I, already, I already tested it, and it's uh, it's uh, it's it's approved by Stitch, but so it's called it's called Thai Stitch, so you know it's as close to Thai Stick as I can get. <laughs> that a hey, classic and like a, if there's you know if it's all right by you i'd be more than happy to uh more than happy to to let you guys know how how it is once i get my hands on it that's that's something that i'm very much looking forward to and once again you know um it, it's we know how it is being from the 209 it's it's we get a lot of hate there's a lot of you know a lot of a lot of People don't fuck with the 209. It's bullshit you know? because and... I've met Drew and I've met you, Stitch, <laughs> and just the quality of fucking... Okay, you said you were done ass kissing. I'm not done. Look, the quality <laughs> of people that come from the 209 is just a different level. Maybe it's just the area code. Maybe you fuckers need to get with the times because yeah. this is just like how you need to conduct yourself. 
Um, I never have done an interview where we, I literally had like chills and it's not just because of like how you conduct yourself. It's just like, fuck, I feel like I'm talking to somebody that actually gives a shit about what they're putting out there. As far as like how they're a part of a podcast episode, it could be whatever it is, wherever this is going to be, just how you, you conducted yourself. Fuck. I got I, all the expletives just start. I'm just probably cursed and do whatever else throughout the rest of this freaking thing, man. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, do, do like I did Kevin James for slap on us, man. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's uh, that, you know, we'll save that one for next time too. That's another thing I got to know about too. Kevin James, one of my all time favorite comedians. That's, uh, 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 there's, we we will you know on your on your time whenever you're able to we are always here for you anytime that there's uh you know we get the chance to sit down and talk with you we'll be more than happy to it's a true honor to have you stitch um rob you got any last words Uh, i'm i'm (laughs) (laughs) kyle any last words sir just, I cannot thank you enough. I've been managing the Fight Pit segment on House Call for for a few months now, and it has just been so amazing seeing, you know, Drew's hard work, seeing my other guys work their work their tails off to have opportunities like this to talk to you. So I just, I can't thank you enough, man. No, nah, it's a it's a pleasure, man. And you know, we're all simple people, right? And you know, another thing that we you you mentioned about passion, Drew, but I always tell that people, and I'm sure we've all been it. If you don't, that little line that we're all scared to cross, if you don't cross it, you'll never get there, right? And uh, I think you guys have all been there, you know, and, and I always tell you, if you do it for the money, you do it for the wrong reasons. You gotta have a passion for that. That's what creates success. So you guys keep it up, you know. One of you guys send me your email, I'll send you a Boxer's Nightmare, and then I'll send you the sizzle, and uh, and you guys take a look at it, and then when you guys wanna schedule uh, another uh, uh, chat, Let's do it. Mondays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays are always good for me. Uh, I'm taking off tomorrow to upstate New York, and then, <clears throat> and then, uh, shit, I think I got the UK and all that, so I got a shitload of work on the weekends. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You got it. There. Uh... If there is anything, you know, we we have the face to face now. I do hope I get to meet you in person and shake your hand one day, sir. I do appreciate you sitting down with us. If there is anything ever that we can help with promo, with uh, the tie stitch, anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out. We we got your back 100 percent. All right, my man. Well, I appreciate you guys. Take care. All right. And then all the best with you guys on your careers there. Right? Marie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, wait, let me tell you a quick story before I go. So the Marine recruiter, see, I, I was going to go in the Navy because my brother was in the Navy and I went to Fresno for my physical and my knee popped. I jacked it up playing baseball. And so I flunked my physical, but the Marine recruiter is the one that picked me up and he's the one that sent me to Oakland and says, just don't say nothing about your knee. I passed the test and, and, uh, I became in the Air Force until this day, like Maurice, I never got his name, you know, but he's the one that changed. That the just, that just screams Marines. It's like, yeah. <laughs> shut up, just shut up. Just, so don't just, about it. just yeah, yeah. say nothing. Don't yeah. say nothing. Hey, hey, but he, but he did say, he took me to Castle Air Force Base, me and my buddy, because we're going to go on the buddy, buddy plan. He said, look, because he's all dressed up, right? The Marines, are, they got the best outfits. He goes, look, you don't want to dress like these guys. I said, shit, I don't want to go to Vietnam. You know, so he's the one that made up. <laughs> he's, so. like, yeah, he's like, oh, you want that Mustang 18% interest? Don't worry, man, you get a Mustang. Just fuck, I'm <laughs> fuck for the, you're a PFC, can't freaking afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're married um, and you have three credit cards already maxed out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What well, you guys think, this- huh? This has truly been an honor, man. I appreciate you so much, Stitch. We will be talking to you again soon. Looking forward to everything that you have going on. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Stitch motherfucking Duran. I'm Drew. That's Rob. That's Kyle. This is the Fight Pit. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you on the next one. You got Devin Haney calling Ryan a drunk. Fans accusing Ryan of using cocaine. 